this is uh, Larry Ricker and this is my first YouTube video and I wanted to show everyone um, a little bit about Inkscape and how you create icons for an Apple iOS application. There's a couple of tips and tricks I had to figure out in order to get this working for me and that is because Apple's icons when you put them on the iOS app platform they can't have any uh, transparency and or alpha channel in them so uh, this is how I figured out how to get rid of that so what you do is um, when you're starting up a new icon you launch Inkscape and it looks a bit like this maybe a few panels are different and then um, you have your page layout area here but it's not the right size for an Apple icon in order to fix that, what you have to do is do File, Document Properties, and then you go over here to the units, this is important, change it to pixels, PX, and then make it the standard size for an Apple um, iOS icon, 1024 by 1024, <clears throat> 1024 or like one megabyte, same number. So. Uh, the other thing you have to set is the background color. Now this is a little tr tricky in that when you pick out your color and let's say we go with maybe something a little royal and um, you'll notice here that you've got this split here. You've got the, the background color and you've got this area over here that is like transparency or alpha channel. And that is because over here with the RGB digits, you have your standard digits that you use um, <clears throat> to do like web development and they'd be like FFF, FFF, FFF for white or all zeros for black. Well, this is the alpha channel. It's the last two characters here. And those need to be changed to um, FF or 256 hexadecimal in order to get rid of that alpha channel and that transparency to it. Okay, so now you've got a basis of an icon. Now you could change that later and just go back into document properties and click on the background and you can use your wheel and pick a different color if you wanted it to be red or something. You could just pick whatever color you want. I'm kind of fond of cobalt. So, uh, that's the first step. And now get rid of your alpha transparencies in your um, alpha channels and your transparencies in your icon. Then you do your basic drawing. So uh, for this I'm going to be drawing a notebook. So I go about uh, building my notebook and I can click on it and um, change the shape of it <clears throat> and uh, then you hold down the control key, the shift key, and the F key, and you get into the fill. And you could set the color of your image. And make sure that you are in fill, because I am in stroke. So stroke, you want to do the outer edge. So that's your, your outer edge. So that's just the rim of the shape and then the fill is over here and then we'll pick a let's see go back to our color font here and pick something we like and then you get the uh, fill so you get the fill and then you get the stroke around the edge now I'm going to continue drawing this out offline and then uh, come back to you to show you how to export this into iTunes Connect and uh, up into your app. Okay, now I have my icon um, sort of developed in uh, Inkscape here and now what I'll do is first step is to export this out to an image that can be used in iTunes Connect and you want to do this as a first step export it as a 1024 by 1024 icon and then upload it into iTunes Connect and make sure 
that it's acceptable to Apple before you continue to work on the icon. So the, there's two ways to export. You can do File, Save As, and you can save it as a PNG file, which is the Cairo PNG. But I've read online that that's not recommended, although I've done it. So the better way to do this is not export or not save as to, but to do an export instead. So you choose the um, export PNG image, and that brings up this dialog you see here on the right. And I probably could close down some other dialogs to make it look easier. But anyway, um, now what? One couple key things that get a little confusing in here is you have custom selection drawing and page. So you want to choose page because you want to export the entire image. And what you do is you specify the image size that you're exporting right here, 1024 by 1024. And then you choose where you want the file to be exported. This is in the wrong directory, so I have to do a little bit of navigation here. Yeah, it's the right directory. I'll give it the right file name. Now I usually specify the size in the file names uh, just to stay organized and then specify the file type as PNG. Now again, the reason we're doing this is to make sure it doesn't have transparency and that it doesn't have alpha channels before we continue. So then you click on this export button here and that writes it out to disk. Now the next step is, I'm going to save this, um, and then go over to iTunes Connect and try uploading it. So we switch to the app. Wait for iTunes to load. Okay, it appears like I've been able to get iTunes Connect to load, and I also have uh, the recording going again. So um, we want to try out this image inside of iTunes Connect. So you get to where you uh, uh, change the, you're doing a new release, and you have to change the version number, of course, and there's a place in here where you specify the icon. I'll have to delete this binary. And then you choose here, and then you open up the file you just exported. Again, you have to do a little navigation to get to your file. And then you bring it up, and then it'll give you an error message if it doesn't load properly. And the error messages you could run into are um, Images can't contain alpha channels or transparencies, or the image must be 1024 by 1024. I didn't get either one of those error messages, so this one is good, so I can proceed. Uh, I'm going to just change the version number, and then save, and then I'll go back to exporting. That'll save, so we'll go back over to exporting. So here we have the different sizes of files that you have to export for um, to do an application in iOS and your icon sizes start with well you got the 1024 which you just did then you got the 200 and I like to label them with the sizes on every file then you have the 180 And then you have the 152 pixel. And you might say, why do I have to do all these different icons in all these different sizes? And you wouldn't be alone because I'm thinking the same thing. But you do. So this is what you do. 144 by 144. 120 by 120. Now, the 200 by 200, that isn't actually asked for in uh, Xcode, but you might as well do it because that's the watch size that's coming out. And if you're going to do a watch or your app 
ends up on a watch. You might need that icon at some point. So we've got the 114, the 100, and a lot of these are multiples of other file sizes, but you have to do it in that size also. 87 by 87. Now I used to export these over to GIMP and then do the export from GIMP, but you can do them directly inside of the Inkscape app, so why not? It just makes it easier and quicker. Got the 76 size. And then the next size is 72. You think they could just like shrink some of these or take a file that's larger and then automatically just shrink it inside of iOS, but no. So we got 58, then we'll go with 57, which is almost the same size, but it's different. And then you got size 50, which is half of 100. And then you've got the really tiny icons of 40. And we'll do the 29 after that. You get the 29. Then there's this new size that just came out, and it's uh, it's two times 63.5, which is comes out to 167. Don't know what that's for yet, but uh, it's required in Xcode, so you do it. Okay, so now the fun part. Okay as if that wasn't fun. Let's go and launch Xcode and put these icons in. So here's our Xcode. Okay, so now we have to navigate around through Xcode to get to where we put in the icon. So the place to go to is first you bring up the names of all your apps and we're doing student, no, class organizer. So you go to here, you can shrink that panel like this, it'll open it up a little bit. And then you scroll down on here and here's your app icons right here. So you click on that little arrow It'll open up the app icon organizer. And then you can locate the plus key down here at the bottom and click on that and do app icons and then new iOS app icon. And then we name the app icon, which is app icon dash co for class organizer. And then we'll start putting those images in there. So you have them all saved down on the hard disk in a directory. And then you start clicking on them. So we're going to put the 29 in here. And this requires a little bit of math. You can do it in your head or a calculator or whatever you choose. But um, the cheats are right here. It tells you 29 point here. So that means it's 29 by 29. So you drag this one up. It's 1x. So that's your first icon. Now the next one is going to be 2x. So that means 2 times 29 or 58. Then the next one is 87. 
which is 3 times 29. Now you go down to the 40s. Now you're going to do your 40 arithmetic table. So we start with 40, but we're not going to do the 40 this time. We're going to do twice that, which is the 80, and then 3 times it, which is the 120. Then we go down to the next one. You're probably thinking, like, why don't they put the actual numbers of what they have to be? They don't, so this is what you have to do. 57, then the next one will be 2 times 57, which would be 114. And then we go down to the next size, which is 60. Um, so it's 2 times 60, so it would be nice if it just said 120, but it doesn't. So it's 120. And then the next one is 180. And then we go to the 29s. We're going to go back up to the top. You're thinking, I already did this one. And you would be right. And then 2 times 59 is 58. And then you go down to 40. So we go 40. This time it is actually 40 because it's 1x, 1 times the 40. And then 2 times the 40 is the 80. Now we go down to the 50s. The 50s, it's 1x, so that's actually a 50. And uh, two, to, 2 x would be 100. And then we go down to 1 x, 72, which is actually just a 72. And then 2 times that, which a uh, little math there, 114, uh, no, 14, okay, 144. So there you go. And then we're going to go down to 76. Now, is it 1 x? Yes, it is. So it's the 76 one we created. And then 2 times that, which is, um, well, you'd have 140, and then you have 12 added to that. So then that bumps you up another to 152. And then uh, this is still a new one, 83.5. And, uh, of course, you don't really need the 84. You just need the 167. And there you go. Now, you're not done. So uh, you save that. It's probably already saved, but just to be sure. Then you, you can get to back where you were with the back button. It didn't change it for you. So what you have to do is go here and do the S-O right here. Good. Uh, no. It's C-O. C-O. There we go. C-O. And then what we'll do is we got to do the professional version and wait, let's make sure we're in the right app. Class organizer, yes, okay. We go here and then we launch that over and then we'll go look for Class Organizer Pro and we go down and switch that one also to CO. Now we're ready to test our icons and normally I just test on a device but for the sake of video, I am going to do it to a simulator. Let's go with the 6 Plus. It's a nice size. Got to choose the app here. Here it is. Okay, and then you click here to execute it. And we want to make sure the icon looks correct. Build started. On the device before we continue. And that's launching the simulator. Build succeeded. And then it'll launch over here on the right. And you can watch the simulator coming up. It should have an Apple icon on it in the center. As it starts up. Okay, I've got the simulator running now. And as you can see, the icon looks fine on the uh, um, iPhone 6 Plus in the simulator. 
Now I'll do some regression testing on some of uh, the other devices and then start the process of uploading this, building it, up, uh, archiving it, and then uploading it to the App Store. Thanks for watching, and if you like the video, just like it below. Thanks.